You can stop folding paper cranes. Your wish has been granted. The Sonic Society with Jack Ward and David Alt. Okay, how about now? I don't feel any different. Breaking through the congested, unraveling RSS feeds brought us enough time to go back to one of the core points in the audioverse. Yes, specifically Final Rune Production Season 2 of The Cleansed by Frederick Greenhall. But I burnt out nearly every circuit in the tortoise doing so. Stand by. I'm scanning for The Cleansed Season 2. This time, episode three. Perhaps it will help reset the circuitry. And maybe even restore you back to your regular form? Final Rune Productions presents The Cleansed, season two, episode 11, The Dark. First, I admit, I did not fully understand Saul. His brilliance. Oh, I saw his rise to power. I saw how he crushed opponents and let no idiot stand in his way. But, but, any fool may stomp on foes in a rush to the top, only to tumble down again. And Saul was smarter than that. He had the courage which no one else had. The courage to do the great things, the terrible things which no one else would do. John. Now John would always talk about how he was high and mighty, how things would always be so good when he won, as if, as if there were such a thing as good. As if John's fantasy world of law and order could actually exist. And when pressed, what did he do? He just sacrificed me for his plan. Now, Saul, there was no misunderstanding. You served him well, or you die. No backstabbing, only glory. Citizens of the Republic, you have sealed your fate by your loyalty to Paul. Those who have listened to his foul words, prepare to meet the wrath of the fall! Come to the sanctity of the Lamb. He will save you. He will cleanse you. You hear that? The Something's coming! This world. It's not. They can't. They can't know. I told you. I told you no good would come of this. Dad! God. God, the two of you, get the hell out of here. Downstairs, now. Dad, what about you? I'll blacken the windows. Go! Katie, go, go! No, no, Tess, we can't leave Dad. No, we go. Stop, no. Stop. Where's my God now? Those who lived in this building sided with the believers. How do we know? We know because we have eyes that you cannot see. We have ears that listen. We are your neighbor. We are the clerk at the food depot. We are the enforcer who protects you, scum, against total chaos. And when you betray us, this is the result. <laughs> Guarantees. 
Driver, we can move along. Tell the soldiers to clear the building. Yes, sir. Wolf says clear the premises. You sure? It looks pretty clear. You got a problem with orders? No, sir. Understood. You destroyed an entire building, Saul. Of your own people. Do you doubt me, Zeke? I do not understand. Zeke, how many lives do you think were lost in that building? A few dozen, maybe, a hundred at most. But do you know what its destruction means to the hearts and minds of a million? We do not have the tools to police every single man and woman, yet we must rule them. When we cannot rule them by body, we must rule them by mind. And what tool allows you to control the mind of a million? Fear. Yes, fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the outsider. Fear of me. They will fear me. They will think I am ruthless, have no doubt. But they fear what will happen to them if they betray me even more. One building. 100 lives. It's nothing. If I have control of the minds of a million. Now do you understand? Yes. Good. We have more to do. Come on. Yeah, Amos. I am. It's just... What? This is what we're looking for. The slag pits. Where I used to work. You mean before? Yeah. Things are a little different now. There's, uh... There's blood all over this rock. Come on, Lucian. This ain't right, Amos. It's not supposed to be quiet like this. Folks are supposed to be watching the slag pits at night. Make sure no one steals. And over there. The apartments, they look dead empty. Something's wrong here. You agree with me? I don't know, Lucian. I used to live in that apartment rise. I want to check. We don't have time, Lucian. Paul said we have to get to the depot. It'll only take a second. Come on. Lucian! Lucian! All quiet. No one up front. I wonder what that means. I don't like it. All right, well, like it or not, we're going in. I'm not. What? Amos. If we both go in, it's a good way to get ourselves trapped. I'll keep lookout on this door. I got the whistle, right? If I see trouble, three squawks, then I hit the dirt. You're gonna wait for me, right? Yes, Lucian. All right, just checking, buddy. I'll go back to the soup. I'll meet you by the gateway. All right, if that's the way you want it to be. Careful, Lucian. I'll be fine. Well, this don't feel like home anymore. Where is everybody? Hello? Hello? Hey, hello? Anybody still here? What happened to this place? Hello? 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 Hey, hello? Are you okay in here? Somebody need help? Oh God, oh God, what did they do? What did they do? You, you did this to us. I'm sorry, you got the wrong guy. I saw you, you went with the preacher man. 
Hey, you brought this upon us. My baby, my baby. Oh my God, Dad, what happened to Tess? Tess, oh. Tess. Hey, no, hey, hey, maybe, maybe there's something I can do. We can get help. You did this. You brought this upon us. Calm down, calm down. Hey, let's go. We can fix you. We got, we got a doctor. They can. Come on, please. There he is. Whoa! I saw him. He's one of them. Come on. Hey, hey now. Fire that guard. Your ass is grass now. Come get it, you little puppy. Hey, we gotta go. Please, come with me. I'm sorry this happened, but we gotta go. We can help your daughter. Listen. This guy I follow, Paul, he wants to stop this. He wants to protect you from the wolf. You know that, right? Hey girl, your sister is living with Jesus now. Unless you and your dad come with me, you're gonna see her again real soon. So please, come on. Please, come on! Don't move! Get down! Damn it! Well, enjoy your trip to the other side. Here we go. <laughs> jumped. Uh, jumped. Don't mean anything. I'll buzz the chopper. Yeah, wheel back, big chopper. We got a live one on the ground. Hey, look what we've got here. You killed them! My wife, my daughter! Sounds like a traitor to me. Dad, Dad! Dad! You're coming with us. Oh, come on, Lucian. Pull yourself together. Jeez, Lucian. I can't turn my back on you for a second. Amos. Shut up and get up. On the count of three. One, two, three. Oh. You gonna make it? Yeah. Let's go. Hey, they're moving. Anyone ever teach you to shoot? Ah. Move it, Lucian. Can't think about that now. What little mice run now from the cat? If you turn now, we might not eat you. What was it doing, Lucian? We're only a hundred feet to go. This is starting to hurt. Come on, Lucian, come on. They're going for the soup. Destroy them. But I, I think they... What, Zeke? Uh, I know one. You know one of them, Zeke? Why would you? Heat. Never mind. Kill them, I said! Sometimes it only takes a second, the flip of a coin to make it life or death. A moment's hesitation, you live or you die. It ain't reason, it's random. That night it wasn't anything random. It was that boy. Amos kept me on my feet. Amos kept me alive. We're almost there! Oh. Oh. Lucian! Oh, where the hell did he get guns like that? Lucian, come on! Oh, my leg, it's slowing me down. Not if you want to live, it won't. Come on, Lucian! <laughs> Holy crap! You can run, Brax! But the wolf will get you! Down here, Lucian! Quick! Man. Oh. Come on, down, down, down! <laughs> we made it down the river. It feels so funny saying that now, because it seems so, so obvious at the time that we'd make it down. We talked like there was never any risk, no danger in tempting the raging waters. With all of the people who wanted to kill us, 
It never occurred to me that it was a river that would nearly kill John Prophet. He was back now, but he wasn't quite the same. Something inside of him changed. He was crouched over the river again, a silhouette against the early morning. A gargoyle. Except now there was a look in his eyes that made him look farther away than before. Like a ghost. John? John? Uh, uh, hey, Maria. We've come full circle, John. You're back to looking like a gargoyle again. Gar- what? Sorry. You look deep in thought. Like when I came across you this morning. Yeah, well... I was. Sorry, I'll leave you and I can- No, no. It's okay. Okay. Sit. Okay. I'm sorry, back there. Nothing to be sorry for. You've never ridden that kind of water before. It was a risk we took. But you almost... It wasn't your fault. Maria, I accepted my death a long time ago. That's part of this oath. Oath? Yeah. I made an oath to protect the U.S. Constitution. Like every soldier. Except mine kind of became something different in my mind when the breaking went down. It's hard to explain. Is that why you fight so hard? Yeah. But why... Now you... What? Hmm. I'm not sure how to say this. You look different. <laughs> like a gargoyle? <laughs> like a gargoyle, yes. Maria, I barely know you, but you're my flesh and blood. My daughter. You're closer to me than anyone here. Yeah? So I'm going to share something with you that I can't share with the others. If you share it, it will wound me, Maria, in a way that no bullet ever has. Okay. I saw something when I was under there. What? When I was in the water, I went... The world went black. I went somewhere. Somewhere I didn't know existed. Somewhere I didn't know you could go. Did... Did you die, John? Maybe. Just for a little bit. What was it like? Hmm... Blurry. Like I'd opened my eyes up underwater, but I saw things. I saw... I think I know where we're going, and... I don't know if I can go through with it. You saw the future? Maybe. Or maybe some kind of future. What... what happened? That much I'm not sharing. Not even to my own flesh and blood. But you might give it up? The fight? No. No, it's too late for that now. But... It has me thinking. Sorry to tell you all that. But I had to tell someone, or else I'd go crazy. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> if you think I'm already crazy, that's fine. <laughs> Maybe I am. I don't. It's okay if you do. <laughs> Going underwater and seeing visions. <sighs> Hallucinations, really. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Maybe. Or... No, I don't even want to think about or. That just makes things too complicated. Just... Crazy neurons firing off. The human mind's a funny thing, you know? Yeah. I guess it is. 
You're a good girl, Maria. You're going to be one hell of a woman. I'm almost 16, John. You are growing up quick, no doubt. I just wish you had a chance to do what a girl your age should be doing. Learning to drive a car, getting your first real boyfriend, going to the mall. Instead, you're riding a canoe with a bunch of backwater old soldiers. I'm sorry. We screwed it up pretty big time for you. It's okay, John. This is the only world I know. Doesn't make it right. John? I'm cold. Can I? Huh? Yeah. Come here, come as close as you like. Come on, everyone, we're almost there. Just cross this... Ah! Sarah, Luke, you have to get across. Luke, Luke, we have to swim. Mom, I can't! The wolves will get us, Luke, please. The wolf is coming. Luke, come on! Mom, I'm cold! Swim, Luke! I can't! Take my hand, I'll... So let's try this again. Let's see, all right? Uh, you got the magazine set? Yeah, that's easy enough. Good. Good. Let me see you hold it. Like, uh, like this, huh? Y you call it prone? Great. You're catching on. All right. So I'm going to throw a stone for you. Think you can aim for it? Seriously? I want to see you follow a target. I'm going to give you a good throw. Keep your eyes open. Yeah, but, but they're open. Oh. Hey, ducks. Oh. Hey, nicely done. D did I hit one? I think you did. Uh, we'll check it out. I didn't even see them there. Well done, Luke. Uh, wasn't that hard? <laughs> it's not. It just takes practice. Though now we need to cross the river. I didn't think of that. Oh, yeah, the river. Hmm? Oh, it's all right. Don't tell me you're scared of it now. Well, we'll have to... After what happened... You cannot fear the river. Respect it, but never fear. I thought I was the one who was going to go over. Why's that? Because I'm always a loser. That attitude, Luke. You need to snap out of it. It's not easy. You let yourself be less than you can be simply because you grew up in the shadow of your little sister. Stop comparing yourself to her and It's maybe... never been this real before, Mark. Death. I never even thought about it. I guess it's been at me my whole life, since I was a kid. And when that plane was coming at us at your parents' house. We could have died any day. I don't know, but, but something about the river just made it so much more real. And that scares you? Death? I guess not as much as I thought it would. I mean, it is. It's scary, but... But seeing in front of you, suddenly you feel like you can... Wrap your head around it. Have you ever thought that you might never see home again? The refuge? No. No, I... It all happened so fast. We, we just started following John Prophet and... I thought about it. I'm ready to go. There's no life for me left with the dwellers. Really? What's so bad? It's not bad, Luke. It's not that. It's just that... Every man must find himself in this world. And to do it, you need to leave home. Isn't that why you came along? To see if you might find yourself out here? I just kind of followed. But... You might find yourself. Even by accident. 
Let's start with a swim. Follow me. What? Mark! Okay, yeah, this water looks cold. All right, here it goes. <laughs> you made it. Yeah, no thanks to you. I think so. Hey, here's your bird. Ooh, well, that's kind of sad. Luke, you're kidding me. It's different when other people kill the animal. To live on this world, we must eat, Luke. That is fact. But we can take of the bird, the fish, the deer, so long as we ensure that we do not take all the bird, all the fish, or all the deer. That is also fact. That's what people screwed up in the time before. Yeah. Let's. Hey. What? We're being watched. Wait, what? By who? Well, where? No need to be frightened. It's not a human. Then, then what? Shh, 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 shh. Hey there. Hey there, are you friendly? Hmm? No, you can't have our duck. Well, you got eyes on it, though. Hey, Luke. Yeah? Do you have a scrap of bread or something? Yeah, over on the other side of the river. Yeah, me too. Well, I guess that's not happening. What? It's the koi dog. You can see her? Feel her. I don't... I'm not feeling... What? I, I don't feel anything. You have to spend enough time in the woods. The sense is there. Being watched. So what do we do? Make it easy to be followed. If she followed us down that stretch of river, she'll have no trouble keeping up now that we're slugging across land. Is that her leg and everything? Animals adapt. Fast. That's why there are koi dogs at all. Yeah, right. Well, let's head back to camp. Yeah. Grab your duck. No, I'd like to leave it for her. What? She's gonna need it more than us. You're a weird sort of hunter. Well, it's what I want to do. All right. Very well. Goodbye, sweet mallard. We'll try for another. When all that happened, it brought me right back to where I'd started. Damn scared. But when you grow up in the soup, you don't let that stop you. You don't let fear do anything to you. If you can't move because you're scared, you don't make it. So you learn to suck fear into you and carry it, like the way you keep moving if you're cold or hungry. It's just one more weight to carry. <laughs> Funny. Thinking about the soup again. That's where we were. All full circle. Oh, oh my leg is in some rough shape. What about the bullet? Oh, grazed my shoulder, thank God. We can get back to Paul. He'll fix your leg. That's a long walk, Amos. It's, uh, that's, that's, that's just too long for a man with a busted leg. So? <sighs> I can't. I've slowed you down by my crippled leg. I can't. Why not? Who says? It's not worth the risk. Leave me behind, and I'll catch up. Stop being stupid, Lucian. Get up! <clears throat> Come on. We can't stay here. Leave me. I can catch up. It's not an option, Lucian. Okay. Okay. Ah! Oh, damn it. I'm up. Uh. 
Amos, I'll go as far as I can. We're, we're maybe a mile to the rail car. We only need to get that far. I'll try, sir. I promise. I'm just... Mm, can't have a, a wounded old fool like me to slow you down. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. I thought you said you came from the soup. I've seen a Subie kid have their leg torn clean off when a gate slammed. She hobbled all the way back to main quarters, and they did what they could to patch it. Yeah, brave girl. Well, she died. Oh, yeah? But she was so brave! Well, that's inspiring. Let's see if I can get as far as a little girl. This is... This is about it, right? The rail terminal. Yeah, I think. So where are they? They said they wait. Maybe they haven't come yet. Or maybe they've already gone. Well, Paul said it was their only job. You believe that guy? Well, yes. He was our Lord Jesus. Oh, well. There's no one here now. Paul! Hey! Hey, Paul! Believers! Where the hell are you? Paul! Oh, damn it, Amos. I think we've been stood up. Paul wouldn't do that. We are his angels. We're just fools to follow some guy who thinks he's Jesus! Lucian! I'm beginning to think there's a lot more man than God going on here, Amos. You can't say this, Lucian. You have to believe they'll come. Maybe, maybe, maybe they'll come. Or maybe we'll sit here until the bad folks get us. Damn it! It's just one fool after another fool following this crazy world! Oh, what is that? Someone's coming. You see, this is why I hate it down here. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Maybe just, uh... He was just passing by. <laughs> Paul. Oh, Paul, you say? Yes, yes, I think I know the name. You expect him to come and save you? Who are you? Me? I'm just a blind man who tells the truth. Blind? Oh! Does it hurt you to look upon me? No. Uh. Hey, hey, don't come any closer. Or what, dear friend? What can you do to me that has not already been done by others ten times as cruel as you are? How do you get around? I mean, with no eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? What's so funny? <clears throat> you don't need eyes in the soup. Hey. Good day, little master. You sound like a boy from the soup. Yeah. Well, how about trains? You hear one of those today? Coming and going. That was before the demon thunder started hitting the land above. You think a man delivered by God has time for you? <laughs> oh, you think so much of yourself when a man cannot even claim his own brother. Brother? What brother? <laughs> hey, say something. <laughs> say something! Lucy. <sighs> so, how about the Sioux people? You know them? I know the rats, I know the drips, I even know the alligators they say live deep down, deep, deep down. Who do you seek? You know who. The people. They used to live, uh, t two tunnels right. You would walk for a long time, till you saw the, um, or, or heard. There was a big fall there. Room had four ways you could go. You would go to the right, then down there a bit more, and you would go to the left. Yes, I know it. And? They're not there anymore. No kidding. Where are they now? You trust a blind man to see this for you? I don't have a lot of choice, mister. 
My friend is hurt. We need help. Hurt? But he speaks. He sees. How hurt can he be? His leg? The mark of a hero. What? You'll follow a blind man into the darkness? If you take us to those people. I am so used to it being my darkness. We'll follow, okay? You know the way? I know too much. That I know. All right. Lucian? Yeah. This guy can help us. You're gonna follow a blind man deeper into the soup. For real, Amos? I think the Lord Jesus put him here. It's providence that we cross his path. Stop talking like that, Amos. Where's the practical boy I met? We're believers now, Lucian. Then tell me, you believe this man will get us where we want to be? I believe, Lucian. Well, I may have my doubts about Paul, <laughs> but I believe in you. Let's go. <laughs> the rats! <laughs> the rats! You're friends with them, aren't you? The rats are your best friends down here. <laughs> The Cleanse was written, directed, and produced by Fred Greenhalge. You heard Kate Gurney as Maria, Philip Hobby as Luke, Ian Carlson as Mark, Paul Drynan as John Prophet, Susan Riley as Caitlin, Kim Dakin as Sam, Robin Monroe as Coy Dog, Tim Sample as Cutler, Brent Ascari as Saul, Dylan Chestnut as Zeke, Joe Swenson as Lawrence, Nathan Speckman as Damien, Adam Marujo as Republic One, Johnny Speckman as Republic Two, George Ledoux as Damascus, Cole Amarello as Amos, Reggie Hodge as Lucian, Eric Moody as Paul, Daniel Noel as Job, Janice Gardner as Queenie, Michael Dix Thomas as Sachem, Rachel Flanger as Bridget, Jamie Schwartz as Michael, Christopher Riling as Bartender, James Herrera as Abraham, Rebecca Mishrel as Young Luke, Lisa Muller-Jones as Luke's mother, Burke Brimmer as Chris, Chris Newcomb as David, additional voices by Gary Hauger, Christine Marshall, Alicia Gorenson, Scott Marco, Allison Slattery, Nicholas Solvey, Hope, Hannah, and Molly Brock, Mirabai Iwanko, John Capron, Seth Dusso, Tim Bates, Ryan Fecto, Alicia Bailey, Ashley St. Hours, and I'm Richard McGonigal. Field sound by Randall Farr and Jod Bowles. Production assistance by Megan LaSala, Peter Campbell, and Sam Rappaport. Sound design by Matthew and Monique Boudreau at Oral Stage Studios. Original score by Hubert Campbell. The song Run For Your Life was written by Adam Swiderski, performed by The Yesterdays, copyright 2005, Seeking Rex Music. This production was recorded on location at the North Dam Mill in Biddeford, Maine, and Wolf Pine Farm in Alfred, Maine. Studio recording at Mind's Eye Productions. Funded in part by a grant from the Maine Arts Commission, an independent state agency supported by the National Endowment for the Arts. Special thanks to Tom Harms and Amy Sprague, Carolyn Goslin, Doug Sanford, the City of Biddeford, Amy Titcomb, Bill Dufries, David Turner, Fortunat Mueller, Peter Stickney, Jay York, Loki Clan Wolf Refuge, Samantha Mason, Coffee by Design, WMPG, Road Microphones, our amazing Kickstarter supporters, and other fans. The Cleansed is a Final Rune production. Find more audio stories at www.finalrune.com. 
That's F-I-N-A-L-R-U-N-E dot com. That nearly has it. We just need one more recalibration and we should be back to full power. Stand by. Misfits Audio's five-minute show, Alice in Wonderland, should provide the appropriate signal. It has been said that necessity is the mother of invention. So if you are a member of the clergy, and you find yourself rowing down the river with several young children, you must invent. This was the exact circumstance in which Reverend Charles Ludwidge Dodgson found himself in the summer of 1862. One of the children was a young girl named Alice, who loved stories. The invention developed by Dodgson was a rather disjointed tale. This wasn't just any story, but one that was filled with fancy, adventure, and compounded absurdities. The children loved the story so much, he was asked to tell them more stories as time passed. These tales have become the subject of additional books, movies, and cartoon features. Oh, if you're curious, Dodson would assume a pen name for this and subsequent books. You know him as Lewis Carroll. Welcome to the Misfits Audio presentation of 5-Minute Classics, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. This is a story that causes many to debate its themes, its narrative, and what ultimately influenced its publication. Some have even suggested the author may have been under the influence of pharmaceuticals, which seems less likely. Most can agree that Dodson, or Lewis, sought a way to entertain with an engaging story. Well, we haven't much time, so let's begin with a trip down the rabbit hole. Oh dear, how shall I ever get to the garden again? Perhaps following the white rabbit was not a wise choice. But then again, the things I have seen leave me curiouser and curiouser. Well now, this is most peculiar. A round room with many doors, a key that I will miss on first inspection, a drink and cake to change my size, and of course a rather lengthy list of adventures that includes croquet with flamingos, hedgehogs, and a queen with anger management issues. Off with her head! For now, I will avoid the queen, but that of course means I will need to visit a caterpillar that will likely contract lung cancer. A cat that seems capable of beheading himself. And, of course, a tea party with the time-challenged Mad Hatter, March Hare and Dormouse. Care for tea? <laughs> oh dear, that is not at all civilized. Here, try mine. Goodness, this is nothing like the garden. Yet, if I am to look carefully at my to-do list, I see that a visit to the Mock Turtle is in order. But of course, I must defeat the Queen's army of cards. I say, can you tell me the time? I'm late. I'm late. Oh, I'm late. Must run, you know. It seems that the only logical explanation for this is that I am asleep. Alice? Alice, wake up, dear. Oh, dear sister, I have just had the most fantastical dream. There were talking rabbits and an army of cards. There were creatures who smashed teacups and insects that abused tobacco. There were striped cats who would occasionally only wear eyes. <laughs> I think it best to move you inside and allow you to rest some more. That is surely one of the most frightfully imaginative dreams I have ever heard. But I do think that I should like to go back. Should Wonderland well and truly exist, I would. I should think... If you have ever encountered any version of the story of Alice, 
then you understand the allusions to so many fascinating creatures in Wonderland. If you haven't, then perhaps this either adds to your confusion or perhaps encourages you to consider the original story, easily discovered in the public domain. Well, let's commemorate those who have made this episode possible. Rachel Lee Hurley as Alice, Queen and Sister, Glenn Haskell as March Hare, Mad Hatter and White Rabbit. This story was written, produced, and mixed by Glenn Haskell. Executive producer and webmaster, Captain John Tadrzak. Theme music provided by John Carl Toth. Additional music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. This production is for enjoyment purposes only. I am your narrator, Jim Patton. This is an original production of Misfits Audio, copyright 2013, all rights reserved. Characters remain in the public domain and were inspired by the original work of Lewis Carroll. The Sonic Society Season 10 is written and produced by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music provided by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society through Creative Commons licensing. The Sonic Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. <laughs>